Welcome back to another session on DSM. In this session, we are going to solve a simple problem based on matrix. So what exactly is the problem if you ask me? It's very simple. You are given a matrix. All that you have to do is print this matrix in a zigzag form. What does it mean is assume that this is the matrix that is given to you. All that you need to do is you need to print 1, 2, 3, 4. Then after that 8, 7, 6, 5. So you should not print only from left to right. First row you have to print from left to right, then right to left, left to right, right to left. That's what you have to do. Whatever might be the size of matrix, this can be n cross n matrix. So in this case, it's 4 into 4 matrix. It might be 10 into 10 matrix or 100 into 100 matrix. Your code should work for any of the matrix that is given to you. I hope this problem is very easy for you and you will be capable of solving it on your own. And I would suggest you to pause this video and write the code by yourself. I hope you wrote the code by yourself. In case if you are not able to write the code, it clearly means that you would have not revised two dimension array properly. In case if you still didn't get the logic, follow this particular video, you will clearly understand what is the logic that you need to write. Now let's take it step by step. I will not directly write the code, rather I will write a code for something else and then I will convert that code into my final output. So how would I do that? Observe this very clearly. Now basically what I need as an output is, I need to print all of these elements, but in a different order. But first, let's try to print all of these elements in the same order the elements are there. Basically what I mean to say is, I will try to print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, next 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this is how I will try to print it first. So if I have to do this, those who already know two dimension list or array, it's very simple. You need to make use of two loops and just print, write the print statement. Those who don't know, just observe this for a minute. So basically what we are doing is we are actually printing all elements present in all these rows. So first we are printing all the elements present in zero row. Next the elements present in row one. Next the elements present in row two. Next the elements present in row three. So basically it means to say I am traversing all of these rows. In case if I have to traverse all the rows, definitely I need to make use of a for loop and uh, the variable will start in this particular for loop, I will be making use of variable i. So I will take the value i over here and from where does it start? It starts from 0th index and goes all the way till the last index. So that is the code that I am writing over here, I am just writing that particular algorithm. Next after that what is that I need to do? Now I have just traversed all this row, in every row I need to do some operation, what is that operation? In this particular row, if I pick, I need to print all the elements present in this row. So basically what it means to say is, if I just pick this particular row, I need to print this element, this element, this element and this element means the elements present in this index. So basically, I need to traverse this one dimension array. So you already know how to traverse one dimension array. So what I will do is, I will make use of a variable j over here and I will start it from 0th index and go all the way till the last index. And after that, inside that I will just print, put one print statement. Now what is that I am printing? I am printing whatever is there in AR of i. i will be in 0th index, j also will be there in 0th index at starting. So i ij is what I will do. Next the same thing. Uh, i will be 0th index, j will be index 1. That is how I need to do. So what I need to basically do is, however I have printed this particular row, the same thing has to be implemented for next row, next row and the last row. So if the same code has to be written again and again, basically that jth row index, uh, sorry jth for loop, I will write inside the ith for loop. So that it repeats again and again. Now if I just write this much of code, Basically what it would do is, it will print all the elements in this particular array. In which order? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. But this is not a final output. What is a final output? Our final output is 1, 2, 3, 4, then it is 8, 7, 6, 5. Then again 9, 10, 11, 12, again in the reverse order, that is 16, 15, 14, 13. Now how to solve this problem? If you observe carefully, half of the problem we have already solved. So some small modifications is what we need to do in this particular case and that is what we will be doing now step by step. Now let's understand which part of the code that we have written correctly. If you observe the output, the previous output that we got is 1, 2, 3, 4, then 5, 6, 7, 8. So 5, 6, 7, 8 is wrong. So let me just 
discard that particular thing. Then it's 9, 10, 11, 12. That's correct. Then after that, we are we had got 13, 14, 15, 16, but we want 16, 15, 14, 13. So basically, what exactly has happened is the code that we wrote works totally correct for row number 0 and row number 2. In simple words, it works in the, in the right way for even rows. So the code is correct for the even rows, but it's not correct for the odd rows. So what is that I need to do? Very simple. What I will do is whenever I will check every time I traverse this rows, I will check whether this particular row is even or odd. In case if it's even, then I will use the same code. Again, I will check whether this particular row is even or odd. You can clearly see the row number is odd. So in this case, I, I don't have tried that code. Next, I will check over here. Is the row number even or odd? Yes. If it is even, what I need to do? Same code I will use. Again, I will check. If it, if it is odd, I will not use the same code. So basically, I will write one if condition and I will check if the value of i even or odd. If it is even, then I will write the same code whichever I wrote previously. So that is what I am showing you over here. Next, after that, if it is odd, very simple change is what I need to do. What is the change? Instead of traversing from left to right, I need to traverse from right to left. That is all I need to do. And you already know how to traverse a single dimension array in the reverse order. You start from length minus 1 and go, come all the way. Means keep decreasing the value of j all the way from uh, my, uh, by minus 1 till 0. That's all has to be done. So what I will do is I will write one more else part over here. So if this condition fails, we clearly know that it is odd, uh, odd row. So I will come over here. And in this for loop, instead of starting from 0, I will start from length minus 1. So that's nothing but if I consider this particular array. This is a single dimension array. So that's nothing but AR of 1. And if I consider this, it's nothing but AR of 3. So basically what it means is it is AR of i. So I will say the length of AR of i minus 1. So that's where I will start the value of j. So j is equal to length of AR of i minus 1. And till where it has to go? It has to go all the way till 0. So I will write 0. And inside this what I need to do? Again print AR of i comma j. So the same thing can be implemented in case of uh, arrays or in case of list. So what I would like to do is I would suggest you to write the code by yourself. I have already written the code. You just have to convert this algorithm into the code. So write that particular code and see whether you are getting the expected output or not. Now let's try to implement this particular code over here. So basically I have taken the same elements which I had shown in the example as well. So I would suggest you to not hard code it over here rather than take it from the user. Now after this what I need to do is very simple thing. I just have to write a for loop. So I will write a for loop for int i is equal to i value should go from 0 till the length of the array i is equal to 0 i is less than ar dot length yes next after that the value of i should increase by 1 so i plus plus so basically this particular for loop will help me to traverse these rows so next if i come inside this inside this what i need to do is i need to traverse the columns so I need to basically traverse it like this. So I will take one more variable j. So I'll write for int j is equal to 0. Yes. Uh, and after that, j is less than ar dot length. ar dot length j plus plus. Now, in this particular situation, we know very well that the number of rows and number of columns are same. But sometimes the number of rows and columns might be different. In those cases, you can write over here. Instead of writing ar dot length, you can write it at ar of i dot length. So ar of i means ar of 0 dot length, ar of 1 dot length, ar of 2 dot length, ar of 3 dot length. You know very well, all of this is 4 and ar dot length is also 4. So in that case, if you write either ar dot length or ar of i dot length, the output remains same. But in case if the number of rows and the number of columns are different, then it will change. So it suggested that you always write it in this manner. Next, if I come inside over here, I will say system.out.print. System.out.print. I will remove this LN because I want the output to be in a single line. Next, after that, I will say AR of I J. And after printing this, I will want one space. So I will give one space as well over here itself. I will just concatenate one space. 
Yes. So let's first uh, execute this and check, uh, check what is the output that we are getting over here. So if I execute this particular code, so we are getting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 till 16 we are getting in the say exact same order. But I don't want like this. I want 1, 2, 3, 4 after that 8, 7, 6, 5. So we did one small change. What was that change? This code works totally fine when the, in the, uh, when the row number is actually odd. Uh, so yes, sorry, uh, row number is even, I mean to say in case of 0 and in case of 2. So I will cut this particular code and I will check if the row number is even. So I will say if i mod 2 equal to equal to 0, yes, if it is the case, I will have to execute the same code that I have written. So I will paste that code. Next after this, if this is not the case, for else condition, I need to do something else. So what is that? Let me write else. And I will paste the same code over here as well. Now all the change that I need to do is instead of going from index 0 till the last index, I need to start from the last index and go till the 0th index. So I will cut this. Yes, I will paste it over here. Now AR of i dot length is not the last index. It is the length of this. And the last index is always minus 1. So I will say minus 1. Yes. And j value should uh, be greater than or equal to 0 in this case. So, I will say greater than or equal to 0. And the value of j is always reducing by 1. So, I will say j minus minus. So, this is all the change that we have to do. Now, let us execute and check if you are getting the expected output. So, if you see 1, 2, 3, 4. After that, 8, 7, 6, 5. We have got in the same order. Then 9, 10, 11, 12. Then again in the reverse order. I hope this code is completely clear to you guys. And if you had seen this code, this is a very simple problem in two dimension. Now, we will, I want you to try all the different, different types of simple uh, problems in case of two dimension array so that we can solve some other complex problems in this session. If you have enjoyed this video and would not like to miss any of our videos, hit on the subscribe button and click the bell icon.